Good morning or good afternoon. Uh, such an exciting moment for us here at the AC to welcome Kengo Kuma. Uh, I was supposed to present him and I, I got so many notes, but I'm not going to do that because who needs a presentation about Kengo Kuma? I think that, uh, especially for us and the young architects, he has been an amazing reference during, during our research and studies in architecture. I, I decided that I will finally very shortly speak about what amazes me, me personally, because I'm pretty sure that everyone has his uh, individual approach. So um, I am so happy, Kengo, that you are here, because honestly, you have been an inspiration, at least to me. I've always um, admired the way that you are working with uh, materiality. It's not like you have only this minimalistic clarity of structural, Japanese traditional way of building, but you really go into inventing new techniques and, and deal with those materials, uh, working with this, the material properties, but also understanding the new technological advances and invent things. The stone roof of the Nagata house is one of my favorites, how you slice the stones, the, um, um, uh, even the interior of the Starbucks and, and the way that you are uh, dealing with uh, wood uh, is, is, a, is a great example for me. Uh, how you work with wood, which is a material that we are very much uh, working here because we consider that it is a solar material, a sustainable material, and uh, the way that we can create lattices and, and not only achieve structural properties but also go beyond and, and create different visual effects. So I'm, I'm glad and everybody I think uh, we're very happy and honored to have you here today. Um, we would like to see how you deal with uh, the place as a combination of nature and time, as yourself always say. So thank you very much for being here today and we're really, really looking forward to your, to your talk. Thank you. Uh, thank you. So I'm very happy to uh, so come here and uh, so, uh, in this uh, exciting place. Uh, today, so I want to show you uh, so, so a smaller project. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, so we, uh, sometimes we are doing the bigger projects, but uh, the smaller projects is really exciting, as uh, I think. Uh, sometimes uh, as a much more exciting than the bigger project. So I want to start from this as a, as a uh, stone card castle mm, because uh, as a, uh, she said, as a stone, you like stone roof. <laughs> I'm very much interested in using stone for architecture, but in a different way as a, which uh, was common in 20th century. In 20th century, stone was used for the material for cladding. As a concrete core, as a, as a add stone surface, I don't like that kind of method, as a, as a, as a, because it is a very typical, as a, as a method of industrial era. As a material is, is just surface material is just a, a, a very very thin finish as a kind of decoration. As a, and this small project is, as always as a as a experimental as a test for the bigger project. And then so we always back, go back and forth from a smaller project, bigger project, from bigger project to smaller project. As that kind of as a, uh, as a back and forth approach and the uh, conversation is very necessary. As a, as a, for example, as a, this as a stone castle project as a, uh, is a small pavilion, as a, so I was asked by Italian Stone Company to build the pavilion. And the, and the name of the stone is uh, Pietro Serena. As a, the quarry is very close from uh, Florence. And uh, probably you know this stone because every upper store in the world, the, they are using this stone for the, the floor. And uh, so because of those upper store projects, that stone company is very successful, and they they asked us to design this pavilion. And uh, this is a pavilion. As a for as a for a smaller project, the material is important, and 
the unit is also very important the, because the goal of those smaller projects is how can I make the democratic architecture. Democratic architecture means a kind of self-made architecture. If we can work with small unit, so, so everybody can participate in the construction process. That is very important because concrete so to participate as a, as a design process is very difficult. In 20th century, the architecture, construction, and the people are divided. But it is through those the, uh, the approach so we can combine architecture, building, and the, as a people, as a, again, as a, with, uh, working with Italian artisans, stone artisans, was, was very exciting. As a, they as a, treated the stone like paper, and uh, it's just amazing. But I am not satisfied as a, uh, with the result because the joint for this pavilion is mortal, and the mortal joint is, is, a, is a kind of is a permanent joint, difficult to take apart easily. And then the next step is translate that idea to the, uh, the aluminum. So I, this is a, the aluminum ca uh, a castle project for the small town in Japan. The name of the town is Takaoka. Uh, probably some Japanese knows, knows that place. Takaoka has a long history of metal work. So probably more than 300 years there they have been working for the metal. Sometimes copper, sometimes steel. And then the last 50 years as a as a big aluminum company as a started from this small town. But the, the, anyway, the Takaoka has a beautiful st as a street. And, uh, and the, that street used to be, to be the, uh, the, uh, the shops uh, of metals. And the factory of the metals are behind the, the, this facade. So, so this is a beautiful facade. Behind that, you can see the shops of some, some metal work and some factory of the metal work and the artisan still working here. The proposal for this as a, as a small town, a small st as a, as a, uh, for the, this street is at, uh, to have the uh, temporary the flexible structures by met aluminum joint system. The, uh, the, uh, the structurally is the same as a triangular stone castle, but material is very different, very light. The, uh, the depth of the, uh, the, this panel is just one centimeter, uh, the same depth, same depth as a stone castle, but the joint is uh, very flexible. And I think the th thinness of this material, material can match the beautiful uh, traditional facade of this Takaoka uh, town. And, uh, and after, uh, please look at the joint. Uh, uh, the, the student, <coughs> I'm so very often working with my student, the Tokyo University student. As a day, as a, I brought them to the, the place and they the, uh, as, uh, constructed, as, uh, they formed this structure just in one day. And after that, the, the student the, the proposed me, uh, I, we want to make the ha real house by the same joint system. Because this aluminum joint system is uh, strong enough to support uh, the one uh, small house. This is, this is the sections of this house. As, uh, we want to avoid flat floor. The normal the planning of the, the house is flat floors and the boxes. But this the, the house has a basically four sections. And the section provides the space. Section provides the activity. This is bit different from the approach of as a normal functionalism. 
and process as the up up left is a bedroom the uh, d down right is ribbing and the entrance and the, and the and the end wall the student the uh, were making the house by themselves and the complete and the interior and the uh, good thing for this system is aluminum panel that can make every furniture every other small items this is kitchen and the sum is a panels is working for furniture and the product design as a, as a integration the in 20th century as a, in the society of, as a as a consumption uh, some companies are buying as a, are selling kitchen system kitchen some company furniture but if we can go to this direction one single cell that can provide any function any activity and the next step <coughs> I today so I want to uh, sh show you the series of project because the one pr the project is not the finish of uh, the creation as always after one project, so I want to go to next step. And this is, uh, you know, this guy, Lucien Pellafine, uh, as a French fashion designer. And so he asked me to design some shops for him. And this is uh, his shop in Osaka. The, the material looks different, but the joint, the, please look at the joint. The, the, is very similar to the joint of the aluminum panel project the, I, I showed you before. So that aluminum company is very good for creating this kind of so, a, a strong joint. The only, the, our idea is from s three joints, just three, so we can create the very organic, the, the very diverse shape. <coughs> This is the result. And uh, Lucien Pellafine is famous for the very, very expensive Casimir t-shirts and the, uh, the sweaters. But uh, I use a very cheap material. So it's a contrast. Expensive as a product, as a, as a, as a commodity, as a very cheap material. And also he loves as a, that contrast. And there's a just three type of joint, but the space itself as a, can be anything, any form. And the next small project is a material is ceramic tiles. The, the uh, location is Reggio Emilia. The uh, so Reggio Emilia is famous for producing the very high quality ceramic tiles. And uh, so one castle, uh, so, uh, I forget the name of the company. <laughs> the uh, Castle Grande Padana, that they asked, asked to design the monument uh, the, for the, uh, the Rotary the in front of the, their uh, headquarter building. Uh, this is a, the, our, uh, the, uh, the ceramic tiles monument, but it's very different from normal monument. So their request is simple. Please use our ceramic tiles. <laughs> I, I couldn't refuse. <laughs> and the, the, but the, the, I, have, I don't want to avoid the, the ceramic tile monument as, as Antonio Gaudi did for his project. Antonio Gaudi is a concrete cores cladded with ceramic tiles. At that time, it is it was a very exciting project. But I think for our period, we should use ceramic tiles as the structure itself. And in this project, ceramic tiles is supporting this building. The particle element is a standard pipe. The diameter is one centimeters, and the horizontal element is, uh, is ceramic tiles, and uh, it's a kind of woven project. So we weave the pipes and ceramic tiles together, and this is a model. 
and that this is a structural uh, simulation. And the lead part is most difficult part. As uh, so we, you know, the wind analysis, earthquake analysis, and then so finally, the uh, we could we can could uh, the, uh, realize that project. As a, so according to change of natural light and the change of seasons, the, this, those particles as a, can show the different ambience and the different colors, and then we call it a cloud. The cloud is like that. Small particles, so as in, as in case of cloud, so, uh, the, the water is the material, but the small clouds and the natural light so can make conversation. And color, shape, as a, and, uh, is a result of the, the dialogue between particles and uh, surroundings. As a, this is the edge of monument. And uh, this year, as a, the, there was accident here. Uh, this is a, in the century, center of the Rotary. And the one uh, drunken driver hit this monument. <laughs> he crossed the rotary straight, and he hit. He hit. The, he destroyed the monument. It was very sad accident. But the good thing for the accident is he he survived. <laughs> if it is if it is was made by concrete, uh, probably as uh, he couldn't survive. <laughs> But this is uh, this kind of uh, soft structure he could survive, and uh, I am very happy to hear that. Uh, the ceramic tiles ideas is uh, translated in this museum. Uh, this museum is is, uh, is in China. Uh, the material is a roof tile, roof ceramic tile. The in China, the, mm, the, the some the, uh, the artisans is doing very well, but the, basically the construction is level is very primitive. But I love the rough textures of this roof tile. This is this is not made as made as in the big factory. The factory is actually not factory. It is just one. And kiln, kiln, kiln. This is a one, as a uh, uh, one small, as a as a baking, as a as a as a pod, as a as a is creating this material. But I like the diversity as a, uh, of the as a size. Size is actually is is it varies very much. This is a function of the museum. And our detail is suspend the, this ceramic tile by stainless wire, very thin wire. And the, this is a kind of HP, as a HP shell. As a, as a, all lines is straight, but we can create curve like that. Okay. <laughs> and this is a detail. Uh, this is view from interior. This is another detail for fixing those ceramic tiles. <coughs> this is a small tea house in the center of the museum. This is the entrance of the parking. And next material is the K by K. Uh, K is, is a K of uh, Kangokuma, and there's another K is, is a sponsor of this project. So uh, the Krug, you know the champagne company, the expensive champagne Krug. So I met Mr. Krug the one day, and uh, so we ate together, and he said, uh, the uniqueness of Krug is the temperature, he said. The 
the usually the champagnes the sh uh, should be very, uh, very, very low temperature. But in case of Krug champagne, he said, warm champagne, also very good. And I was also very warm champagne. I don't want to <laughs> drink warm champagne. But he said, for the beef or some meat, the warm champagne is, is better. Here. And, and then, as I found the theme of the project, temperature. And uh, the idea is like that. The, I saw the one model up, upstairs, the, uh, you, uh, the small the models. Uh, the, the joint is a shape, memory, is a poly polymer. Is a, in this case, material is shape, memory, alloy, metal. As a <clears throat> and then, if you, we can make this uh, uh, pavilion by shape, memory, alloy, the pavilion can change the shape uh, the, like the, our human body. And for as getting this effect, the structure should be the very soft. And uh, my structure engineer, in, case, in this case, I worked with uh, Professor Alaya. And uh, his idea is this ring. The diameter is 30 centimeters. And uh, this joint is as a, uh, as a very small plastic joint. This is available anywhere, this plastic joint. And fix this the ring by those plastic joint. And uh, because the, this structure itself is very soft, and we need uh, the kind of uh, kind of form to support tentatively. As a, and after fixing, fixing every unit, as a, we can take away this the form, and then it's so very very transparent. And uh, we cover the. Uh, the, this stru these structures by this the uh, the plastic as a fabric. It's a kind of fabric, very soft fabric, because it, the the structure itself is too transparent that nobody can see, and then we covered by this as a fabric. And this is the entrance, small small entrance. Because if the entrance is big, so, so, so structurally it is, it is uh, too uh, soft. And this is uh, uh, nighttime. If temperature drops, the top of the, of the dome is dropping, so like the human body. So to control the, this, the, uh, the, uh, the, this uh, the change is not so easy. So, uh, and uh, so when uh, the, one of the princess royal family came to this pavilion, uh, the, 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 this pavilion dropped to her head. <laughs> and uh, people are screaming, ah! <laughs> because she's a royal princess. Yeah, but anyway, uh, she's OK. <laughs> And the next project is, is a Casa Umbrella project. Uh, if the, I show this title in Japan, people be, began to laugh. Because umbrella, in Japanese, is a, we call Casa. And the Casa Umbrella is a umbrella umbrella. <laughs> and the, as a, the theme of this pavilion, uh, the title of the exhibition was uh, Casa de Tutto, the organizer is Milano Triennale. Uh, the year is 2008. And before the 2008, so we had some uh, the disasters. The, the big disaster tsunami in Japan is 2011, but before 2008, uh, the, we already had some disasters. Tsunami in Indonesia, uh, Sri Lanka, or hurricane in America. So, so. And then so the organizer of the uh, uh, exhibition was, uh, uh, decides the title, 
Casa de Tutto, the, the kind of a refugee, the temporary house pavilion for uh, the people damaged by disaster. And my idea, is, uh, when I heard the Casa de Tutto, I as I immediately decided we should use Casa Umbrella <laughs> because of the coincidence of Casa and Umbrella. And, uh, but it's not just a joke. Uh, the, the idea is similar to Buckminster Fuller's Fuller Dome, Geodesic Dome. But the Geodesic Dome is actually not easy to be built by themselves because of the structural system. His idea is structures is metal or something, but still he was uh, dominated by the 20th century's structure idea, flame and the membrane. But in this case, the membrane or umbrella is, uh, also works as structure as an element. And the flame of umbrella is very thin, as you know, but the flame is, is as, uh, taking the uh, compression, and membrane is taking the uh, suspension. And compression and suspension are working together. Uh, it is tensegrity structure. And tensegrity is also uh, the, uh, coming from the idea of Buckminster Fuller. But uh, the, he didn't the use tensegrity idea for Jurassic Dome. And uh, if we can work with tensegrity ideas, we can minimize the structures of this uh, the pavilion. Uh, we designed the Umbrella, it's very fancy design. <laughs> and uh, the, the, those triangular element is very important so for uh, geometrical studies. The 15 umbrella can make one dome. This is a study by the, our engineer. And the 15 student gathered here in Milan and then, so then uh, complete this pavilion. And the joint system is uh, the zipper, a waterproof zipper. A waterproof zipper is actually very strong. And then the interior can be like that. And the uh, triangular pieces is, is working as a between the umbrellas. And, some, and also it is openable. It is a window. And here you see uh, the small door. It's a small door. And the material is, uh, I like the material. Uh, it looks like Japanese papers, but uh, actually this is uh, uh, the waterproof sheet, the, uh, the Dupont products, the Tybeck. Probably you, ha uh, st you have Tybeck here everywhere in the world. But it's very strong material. And, as, uh, and after as a completion, so as a, after finish of the project, students as a, as a, as a suggested me to stay night here in the house. OK, I said, please. So I, I don't do that, but <laughs> they like to do that. Uh, they drink and eat. And, and, and sleep in this pavilion. And the 15, for 15 students, the size is big enough to sleep in night. And then so my idea is if some earthquake happens, and if tsunami happens, as a, we should prepare the one, a special umbrella. So if we can escape the carrying this umbrella, the, if we find friends, 15 friends, we can build one house together. And this is a kind of very democratic as a refugee system. Mm -hmm. The next project is the water brick. The ideas came from this polytank. So probably everywhere in the, everywhere in the world, you can find this, this kind of polytank for construction site. So if it fills with water, it's getting heavy, and it can fix. And it's as a, uh, light and heavy, it depends on the, as a condition. 
And I like that the idea of changing weight of material. So for normal architecture, material cannot change weight. But, but if we can use this idea, so we can control the weight of the material. In Milan, so this is a simple first version. Simple version. So for bottom three, uh, uh, bottom four lines, you see water in, in inside, and then it's a, it's a kind of foundation. And the upper part is light, and the lower part is heavy. So it's simple. But I am not satisfied with that simple system, and I want to go to the next step. This is a, a, a water branch. The structurally is a, as a, it is different from the first scheme. And uh, so this is uh, the, the second version of the branch is, was for the New York MoMA exhibition. Uh, probably you remember the uh, House Delivery is the title of the ex exhibition. And so this is a prototype. And uh, so we made this prototype uh, by using uh, this uh, die cast as aluminum. And uh, it's, a, it's a rotating it's a casting system. And this is the detail. The big difference from first one is shape, of course, and has a, for both ends, the two bulbs. This is a big difference. If the, we have two the bulbs for each end, so we can create flow of water. So we we can the the my the the idea for this second pavilion water branch is create the body in the in human body always water is flowing blood is flowing water is flowing so, as if we can the as a, adapt this idea to architectures so we can control temperature very easily. And this is a system. Uh, the structurally, uh, the, uh, this uh, the linear version is more effective. And this shows the, the system of water flow. And in so in New York, we exhibited this model. But as a, this model is just a prototype. As a, we, we couldn't as a, as a make water flows in this uh, as a. Uh, in this prototype, uh, and the next step is as a, to as a realize the one house, small house, by using this system. The house is here, and the, the red square shows a heat collector. The, the goal of this project is perfect the the self energy system. As a not depending on the infrastructure, the energy is coming f from their own system. It's the same as our body. Our body is not plugged in. As the energy is coming from our inside, as a as a same, same uh, uh, autonomy is a goal of this project. This is a system: heat collectors and uh, the kitchen, bed, bath, as a what hot water is flowing, and then naturally the building can be heated, and the water can be heated. In so this is a courtyard of my university, and this is a the mock-up. And uh, this linear as a uh, unit can support this kind of roof. Uh, this is a sh connection of each as a unit. And so this is a uh, final product of us. This is interior. The kitchen and the bed, but it's too small. <laughs> and uh, and this, uh, the idea is the same as aluminum house. So one single unit that can make everything. So this is, uh, so I think, similar to body of life. As a cell, as a, is is can be anything. As a cell is and water is always flowing. 
In 20th century, the, uh, people thought body is very similar, body was very similar to machine. But the, actually, the mod machine model uh, is a kind of the fiction of that time. The recently, the uh, biolog biologists, the, uh, the, the, the books of, uh, of the, uh, the biologists of our time, so defined life is flow, life is cell. And so th th this model came from the idea of those uh, the biologists. And the next, um, the next project, next some projects I want to see the soft material. The, this is a project for Frankfurt the Design Museum. The main building was designed by Richard Myers in 1980s. The, the, it's a beautiful white building. The director of Frankfurt Design Museum asked us to design the pavilion. Um, but he said, he said a strange, strange thing. The, don't use natural material because and I, I asked, I, 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 I asked him, why? No, not natural material. If so, the priest asked Tadawando. Or <laughs> but uh, he said, if you use your normal material, woods, papers, or the soil, uh, it is too fragile in Germany. In next morning, building will disappear, he said. As a vandalism, the German vandalism was so, so hard. And, uh, and then the, this is the answer to his uh, the request. My answer is, this building, is, 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 this building exists when people need this building. And so then the idea is uh, the inflammable, uh, I don't know, uh, as uh, as a, uh, as a flammable as a as a air dome, the, which they need this building. They uh, push the air into building, and that in 15 minutes they can build it. And the structurally, this is a double skin. The, the inner skin and the outer skin was, was are fixed by the doors, the, the strings. And from interior, the, stone, the joint the of strings is beautiful. And the, this is a door, again, because this is a tea house. And the small door is very popular very, as a, for tea house. And this is a, as a, as a fireplace of tea house. This is nighttime view. Our next project is a, as a light lighter. It's a, a building museum, a national building museum in Washington D.C. They asked us to build tea house, but they said budget is limited. Always a small pavilion budget is limited. Mm, but then, and uh, my the answer to their low budget is. Okay, so I can carry this pavilion so from Japan by myself, and then it can be cheaper. So, so this is a balloon. Then so I put, I can put this pavilion into my in my trunk, and uh, the, this the fabric is the lightest fabric in the world. Uh, you know the organzi, but the, this is called super organzi. The Japanese company invented this super organzi. So weight is one tenth as normal organzi, very very light and almost transparent. And I carry I carried those two the uh, stuff, balloon and fabric, in my trunk. And uh, the, the, the carpenters of Washington prepare the tatami, as a, and then so we can build in this in a very very low budget. And and uh, and Tima, this is famous Tima sir, and he admired this tea house. And the next step by this as a membrane project is breathing pavilion. This is a breathing pavilion in Shanghai, and every unit are connected by the pipes. And that idea is very similar to water brick. Water brick is every unit is connected, and then flows, flows breathing. 
and here the same thing happened. And the compressors we had have a compressor besides, and then the connected by pipes, and the, this pavilion is breathing like our lung. The, we work with the material is the EPFL, uh, ETFE. The ETFE is popular material here. But the, the, I found very good artisan in Japan. They can the, create this kind of small ETFE as a, uh, pillows, as a, uh, probably as a, some technique is needed. This is the furniture we also created for this exhibition. And uh, next is a bigger uh, uh, translation of this soft material. This is the experimental house in Hokkaido. Hokkaido is uh, up north Japan, very, very cold so in winter, minus 30 degrees sometimes. But as I don't want to use insulation for this building, it's usually the cold climate insulation, heavy insulation, but I don't like that idea. Uh, the this uh, basic ideas of this house is the flow of air can control climate. In this is like human body again. The flow can call as a can as a control the temperature. As a, as a in winter time it's like that, very very cold. But I I I stayed at this house several times but no problem at all. I still survive here. <laughs> so I want to show the, some of the wooden project as a, at the end. As a, as a, uh, this project was, uh, was for uh, Milan Salone. And uh, uh, this is also the collaboration with my student. The joint system is this, Chidori. Chidori is the name of the toy of Japan. It's a small toy. So you can buy Chidori as a, uh, in some villages. And the joint is like that. The three sticks with the special sections. And if we can as a twist, we can as a fix. Without any nail and without any glue, we can fix any fix structure. This is that. As uh, we we uh, carried those sticks from Japan, and my student uh, built this house in five days. And after that, the next step, the next dream, is to realize permanent building by the same way by ten method. As a professor Sato of my university has tested this, this joint system, and his conclusion was so 10 meter building can be possible. And the section of the, that stick is 6 centimeters, 6 centimeters, and the length is at, at 1.8 meters. And this is a, uh, a completion building. It's a 10 meter high building, and the interior is like that. And the uh, next step is a bigger structure, bridge, wooden bridge. Uh, so for this town, Yuzuhara, so we, uh, so we already built five structures. Uh, so this main interest, industry, the first industry is the uh, uh, main economy of this village. And uh, then they so want to work with us for this kind of wooden building. And this is the interior. The, uh, this also can be used for museum. And also the artists can stay in the bridge here. This is artist space. Artists can stay here, make art here, and exhibit art here in the bridge. And the next is the uh, Starbucks project. Uh, the location is the also very unique location. It's a Dazaifu. Temangu Shrine, as I studied 919, as a very old religious uh, building. 
this is a, as you see, the Tori gate here. Gate here, the, the sacred mountain, and the main approach. Now, this is a site. This is not interior design. We built uh, this, this sm uh, the small building. And the structure is, is this wooden sticks. This is a system of wooden sticks. In this case, we used a metal pin. The metal pin is, is fixing four sticks. And, uh, and, th and this is not an uh, easy system for even for Japanese carpenters. And then it's a little bit, little bit expensive than normal Starbucks. <laughs> and Starbucks people uh, claimed that uh, you should pay million of Starbucks coffee for this house. <laughs> <laughs> but after the completion, they are very happy because many as the customers came to this shop. And, uh, and they, this shop became one of the, the flagship of Starbucks. And the next step, and as a next step is this the, the pineapple cake shop, uh, the pineapple, the Taiwanese pineapple cake shop in Tokyo, uh, and the very close from my the studio in Tokyo. And the, the after the, the completion of Starbucks, I want to the, the adapt this system to the different size and different context. And uh, the, what we did for this is make it vertical and supporting three floors. This is interior. This is rooftop. And uh, the joint system for as uh, we adapted this is stronger than Starbucks system because this is supporting three stories. And this system is called Jigokugumi in Japanese. Jigoku means a hell, the devil. Gumi is a joint. It's a hell joint. It's very scary name, and uh, the meaning is if it is it once fixed, nobody can take apart. Then it's called hell joint. As uh, this is a system of hell joint, and the uh, interior can be like that. And it's a nighttime view. Mm. Mm. And. Uh, so we adapt as a as the last two pictures, the last two projects is a as a more so light, more as a temporary lighter structure. This is a portable as a tea house for uh, Shimogamo shrine. Uh, this is the uh, result, and the system is a. Uh, three layer system as a fixed by magnet in this case we use magnet because magnet the these days a new magnet system is very very strong and, uh, you see the three layers of sticks as a, as a ETF is also used for this case and this is a magnet probably you can understand easily the three layers of st with the sticks, different directions, they can support the, the building itself. Uh, so, so people can carry the load of ETFE. It is very light and easy. And we can fix it. And you can see the joint of three layers. Three layers of ETFE with a magnet and a stick of wood. Two centimeter by two centimeter. Two centimeter is a very very small as a section, but still can support the building. And the last project I show you today is Pavilion of Incense. It's a, it's a, it's, a, it's for Royal Academy London. As a as a what I did for this project is. Adapt this idea to the building size. The basic as a, as a idea is space 
the sometimes the, uh, the uh, defined by visual effect, but sometimes defined by smell. The, uh, there is a multi senses uh, perception. Uh, this is a basic unit. And the basic unit. And the joint is a uh, as a plastic, so we, as a, as a, each, which as can be heated and shrink it and fix it. Uh, this is a space for us, and uh, the geometry is actually uh, the controlled by grasshopper, and uh, as because we want to as a, uh, create some dense space and some as a as an open space and this is the final result and there it is uh, it is a, as again very very thin is a bamboo sticks as the diameter is four millimeters is a, and uh, as a, what we want to as a create is as an immateriality made by the real material. And uh, today, as, a, as a, I only pick up smaller project, but as, as a smaller project is also can give us the big hint for the bigger project. So, because in the, the, what uh, uh, really excites me is um, as a, that kind of catch ball of small and big, small and big. And uh, as I also, as uh, what you are doing here, as a, as a can as a give you the big hint for your uh, future projects. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Mr. Kuma. Now is the moment of the questions. So if some of the public of uh, our students or visiting students have some questions, this is your moment. Just lift your hand. I guess you got a lot of things to ask to our guest. Shy people. Our master director has some doubts. Okay, thanks, sir. Thank you, Silvia. Well, actually, I will have the possibility to ask Kengo later as many questions as well. So at any moment that you want to take the microphone from me, please do that. Um, Kengo, thank you very much for your presentation. I think uh, um, it's so nice to see exactly what you have been mentioning at the end, how the small projects, the small pavilion, the very, uh, let's say, prototypes and pilot projects could give ideas for bigger scale. So my question is about scale. And, um, and it is related with um, a moment that maybe you're not experiencing so much back in Japan, but we do experience a lot here in Europe that has to do with the recession, the economical crisis, but more than that with a, a, a crisis of principles and a social crisis, let's say. And uh, as architects, we are uh, called to give um, solutions, not only by constructing, but also by giving the visions of what is the new way of of uh, uh, inhabiting uh, uh, the cities or building the buildings. So my question is about uh, whether you think, I mean, which are the strategies that you consider as an architect uh, could be a solution to provide um, um, the cities with the necessary, let's say, buildings and shelters. We know that we are living at the moment of a big urban growth, you know, like in, um, two out of three people are living today in cities, so we still need uh, to keep on um, providing shelters and housing inside the cities, but at the other on, simultaneously, we have the economical crisis and we have the limitations of construction. So, taking this uh, into consideration, what do you think that architects should start proposing as alternatives to the ways that we have been constructing until today? Mm. <coughs> uh, <okay>. yeah. <coughs> uh, <coughs> um, uh, the, 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 I. 
as uh, I'm doing the project in as some bigger cities in China as as uh, and Singapore as uh, as uh, economic growth uh, is, is, is amazing. But, but uh, uh, what the architects the really is uh, should do now is not creating the big monument the, for the developers. This is uh, those the bigger pro project is a as a kind of cheap commodity in in the history. Just the 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 finish, just the the the, the decoration, the, the the boring structures. And uh, I, uh, what we really want to uh, achieve is uh, the finding the new way of construction. The, and and uh, it is not the, uh, the it's not a dream. It's a it's not dreamy project. But actually, in Japan. Um, the population is decreasing, and so, uh, so that kind of dec decrease will happen in Korea and China very soon. So, and that uh, as a shrink of the city uh, uh, should be our next program. And already, one eighth of the, the Japanese houses is vacant houses. The so one eighth is a big numbers, and uh, in in next thirty years, one uh, fourth quarter of Japanese houses will be vacant and we should find how to renovate those houses and for renovation and for rehabilit refurbishment of the house we need those techniques the, the democracy of, of the participation of the people to change the space to, to make the space by themselves and uh, for as a, for that kind of new as a phenomenon as a new situation so those methods is very help, sub helpful, I think. So um, pop-up solutions. And this brings me to my second question that has to do with sustainability, because mm. sustainability, we have it, um, I mean, it has been always considered in relation with time as well. So um, uh, buildings or architectural solutions that could survive um, mm. uh, a long time. Mm. So what is the new notion of sustainability in our digital era and our, our new context, our new global context, because especially with this example of your house, of the pop-up house, the 15 people, uh, collaborative uh, structure and housing, I think it already introduces a kind of a big shift of mentality in, in terms of, of what is a, a, a private house and, and what is the durability of, of housing. Mm. Yes, as you know, the, in Japan, historically and traditionally, the, the people the thought house is not permanent. The, you know the famous episode for Ise Shrine, as every ten, 20 years, the Ise Shrine was demolished and built every 20 years. And last few years was that 20, was that 20 years. And, uh, and also the good thing for Ise Shrine is demolished the element the, is, is going to the smaller shrine. The, and the two, and the, it's a kind of recycling, the big recycling system of the material. And, uh, as a, and the, probably the, that kind of philosophy, the, that kind of ideas came from the, the national, as a, the condition of our, of our country. So we have wood. And the wood is not permanent material. And then so we need recycle, so we need the, as a, as a not as a partially recycle, so something like that, always changing. It is as the same as the body. And some cells as are going, as are gone, as are some new cells pro are produced, it is always flowing. And you know metabolism. In uh, the 1960s, uh, probably uh, the, some uh, young students don't know <laughs> metabolism, but in the 1960s, Kurokawa, the Isozaki, and Kikutake, the, those people the started the movement, metabolism. And uh, this, is, um, this is a big, as a, as a, and a, as a important movement in the, uh, the history of modernism, modernism movement. But the, what they s said, is very exciting, is uh, very challenging. But the achievement of metabolism is was not so much as compared with their as, uh, their as, uh, uh, campaign, because the, the biggest problem 
as uh, I talked with Krokawa once, and the big, biggest problem of the metabolism is size of unit. The clock, you know, Krokawa's Nakagin Towers in Tokyo, there is a capsules, and the, the main core and the capsules. But his idea was replace the capital the every 10 years or something. But actually, uh, act, uh, after 40 years, the no replacement happened. So, because the to replace a capsule is impossible. And also the, 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 the core the, the, and the capsule was, was, was uh, uh, fixed very, very tightly, the, and every pipe and every electricity was connected tightly. And uh, actually, the, uh, the replacement was, uh, was imp impossible. Because of the size of the capsule, if we can find a smaller unit, smaller cell, so we can fix, uh, we can uh, so change easily. And, uh, and this is a, as a, I think this is uh, very much related with uh, the, uh, the, the, the new uh, the thought of biology. In 20th century, the organ, uh, the, the stomach and lung and the bone, organ, the people th thought organ is a basically a unit. But now, the people think small cell is a unit. Sometimes, the, the smaller than cell, some particle is considered as is a basic unit. And then, the, we should find a smaller, smaller, smaller as a, as a unit. As a, that can make our project more flexible. Uh, as a, uh, and the time and the architecture can be combined. Hello, Mr. Kumail. We are Kumeya from Sarnega Kumeya. We worked before in a project in a Chivas house. You know, so my father wants to ask because we are working in the ceramics to try day every day to put the ceramics in the new architecture. What do you think about the material, the ceramics? If we can apply in the new architecture the material, and what do you think about the material? Yes, the uh, the, the reason why the we want to work with you is uh, as a, as a, you as a, as a clear, as a, you as a, as a challenging spirit about the material. The ceramic itself is a very has a long long history, one of the oldest material for human, but still the the the, the new possibility exists for a ceramic. And you have been working for the ch that kind of challenge, challenge with the, as a, as a, as a long, a long history material. Now I always uh, try to combine the traditional local material with a very contemporary technology. So, so if we can the, gather those two ideas together, we can go to the next step. And in that sense, ceramic is very interesting because fires can create the texture and the, and the, and the, the floor is a, is a fire is, is one of the uh, most important element for human and also for animal. So we always live with fire. And if we can use ceramic for a building, we can feel fire behind the ceramic. That is a big reason. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, um, thank you very much for your uh, very inspirational uh, lecture. I wanted to ask, you, you were speaking about the democratization and um, participation, uh, and, it, and it, it is clear that the, there is a shift after the mass production systems to a new thing that the, we don't know uh, very specifically what it is. How do you see uh, the new industries in the in the bigger scale of the things, like the the industries that are really constructing the cities? How do you see their role changing or relearning from traditional techniques? How do you see their role adapting to this uh, new paradigm? Mm, a lot of traditional in industries. Is, uh, yeah, as uh, I sometimes work with the 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 
big the factory or the mass production comp company. For example, the, as an aluminum triangle system, we worked with uh, uh, the biggest aluminum company in Japan. But as a, as the story is that, that company started from this small village, from small town, Takaoka. And then the, I, I like the contrast of the, now the bigger company that starts from the, the small street. The works with the, the, the bigger companies, the, the, sometimes the, uh, can give many hint and, the, and also very efficient. So they, the, the, from the first meeting with them, just three months they produced the final product. It is amazing, just first meeting, just three months. It's a Japanese speed of big factory, and the Toyota and those companies have, they can make the, the, those kind of products in, in this speed. And also the working with a, with a small company and working with a, as, a, as an artisan, also the, we can find advantage. And the each, the, and then, as, a, as a, I, my, I'm as a open to every possibility of production. So, hello, uh, Mr. Kuma. I come from Stuttgart University, and we do this pavilions together with Achim Menges there. And it's interesting to see that you really do this in a different cultural context, because the first question that always arises with our pavilions is, how can you turn this into a permanent uh, structure? How can you turn this to a, into a large structure? So upscaling is always the first question. It's interesting to see that in your context of Japanese uh, architecture, the temporary building itself seems to have a certain value, which is not the case in, uh, in Stuttgart. So my, and it's also very nice to see how you turn <coughs> this kind of traditional building elements into something new by putting them in a different modern context, and yeah, it's very nice to see. The question that I have is that all your structures seem to be based on the conception of using identical elements, identical um, water bricks, identical timber elements, and combining them to a kind of very complex shaped structure. And did you consider using modern computational fabrication tools to differentiate the geometry of the elements itself? Because also these kind of new tools are becoming more and more available to small-scale uh, fabricators, enterprises, to students and all mm. kind of architects. Mm. Did you consider that? Because all your systems are based on the same, same identical uh, elements. Yeah, but I, 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 as a probably as a, uh, uh, as a, as a, as a, as a, as a uh, idea to use as a single material is related uh, with our as a definition of body, the so, so, as a, as a new definition of body, yes, made by the, the very simple, the, made by the simple unit, but the complexity and diversity can, can be possible. And uh, and actually, the, the material is a single material. For example, in this case, but the the geometry of this the pavilion is, is very much controlled by the uh, grasshopper as a plug-in, <laughs> and as you know that then the as a, the, the line is as a, has a curve, not so straight, and every dimension of the unit is different, <laughs> and uh, that. That kind of diversity, that kind of organic form, the, uh, can be possible by the, uh, the contemporary technology, and uh, and then the, uh, it looks like simple, but actually it's very complex system. Mm -hmm. um, here at Tiak, we are researching quite a lot about. Uh, natural materials for construction uh, within an idea that um, um, architecture doesn't have to be forever 
and so uh, the fact that it might not last forever is one of the parameters and we consider this a, a, a change in the conception of architecture. So we are saying that it's actually something that was already uh, part of the Japanese culture from the um, architectural Japanese culture and so I wonder to know if you think that uh, modern architecture in, or contemporary architecture in Japan is aware of this uh, um, let's say responsibility of or this capability to show a way to the to the architecture of the rest of the world to change the consideration of the architecture as not some per, something as permanent but uh, temporary. Yeah, as 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 uh, for conservation, the the, the the this the this kind of method is um, also very so effective, I think. So, the permanent, so of course, the, our environment itself is permanent, but the, 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 but the element the can be replaceable, and the, 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 the it is kind of the, uh, related with the idea of sustainability. Sustainability the, is is uh, minimize the energy and minimize the material. But the, the but the replacement is very helpful for, for sustainability. So one example is a Horyuji Temple in Japan. Horyuji Temple uh, is the oldest temple in the world. Uh, the oldest, uh, not temple, oldest wooden structure in the world it was built seventh century. So already is so 1,400 years ago, but still exists. The build, whole building is. Ex is building exists, but as for the material, the some replacement happened the every ten years or every twenty years, and then the, the permanent and the and the and, and the replacement the can the achieve the both time the same time. Mm -hmm. That is our idea. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I don't want to make the short life the environment. Okay. Any other questions? Hello. Um, I would like to ask, uh, we've been talking about replacing and uh, structures that are temporary. Do you think there is a way of using concrete in this uh, direction? Like concrete uh, is built to last. Is there a way of using it uh, also to, for a temporary uh, architecture? <coughs> so I, as of course, I'm, I'm sometimes using concrete for bigger projects. So and, and the, uh, but the, even in that case, so I'm thinking of the life of concrete. Life of the concrete is not permanent. So and also the problem of concrete is uh, it is difficult to check the what's happened inside. So for the, the wooden sticks, so we easily can just see so, uh, so what happened for the material, but in concrete, surface is okay, but sometimes is uh, in core is, uh, is, is not good. And then uh, uh, basically I'm tr I don't trust concrete. <laughs> in 20th century, people believe the concrete is permanent as a, as a, as a permanent as a, a mat uh, magic material, but it's, uh, it's not magic material. But as we need concrete sometimes uh, for some project. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, most of your projects you've um, had a, an initial pavilion or something and then it seems you've continued with the same philosophy to apply it to, you know, to push the limits of the project in a, in a new pavilion or a new building. Uh, the K by K building, K by K pavilion, K by K, yeah. um, was one that you didn't seem to develop any further after that pavilion. Did you, was there a purpose for that or? Yeah, so uh, as for K by K pavilions, as a, after the uh, finishing the pavilion, as a, uh, as a we as a want to go to next step, <laughs> but we, we so far we uh, could, we couldn't find the the new sponsor for this new pavilion because that material is very expensive material. 
the only champagne company can support <laughs> that, that project. But uh, I want to go to the next step because it's a movable pavilion is a, has big potential. The some, as a, some, for example, the uh, Lemco House the, as a designs a movable pavilion, but there's always a hinge, hinge and the move like that. But there's a, as a, 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 a K by K, the movement is smoother. So like uh, like body, body as a so that kind of smooth the uh, the movement that can make architectures as a very in the very different phase. Okay. Hello. Uh, I wanted to ask you about something that uh, you defined in this uh, exhibition for the Royal Academy. Yeah, uh, I saw in a video uh, how you define the concept of ma, about the matter and the space uh, in this kind of uh, abstract construction of uh, buildings. And how can you um, compare something like this or like the the little uh, tea pavilion uh, with the organza to one of the bigger buildings in this uh, sense of uh, abstract space or construction of this space of abstraction. Yeah. <clears throat> For those projects, I think the, as a result, the, as a solid volume, uh -huh. the, we still can as a design space. The idea of Ma is, is, is is uh, is always like that. The ma means emptiness. So mm -hmm. ma is emptiness. Emptiness between the uh, the mat material. But as uh, in the Asian philosophy, the uh, the empty space between the material is more important than the material itself. The material itself. And uh, the same as the ideas exist here. Yeah. But uh, and but this idea is very much. So related with so sustainability. Sustainability is, going, is, is to minimize the material. Mm -hmm. In this case, the material itself is a very thin as a bamboo sticks. We, c we could minimize the material, but we could maximize the effect of material. Okay. okay. Thank you. Hello, thank you very much for the lecture. It was very interesting. Um, I had the pleasure of noticing that uh, a lot of your architectural developments start with uh, ap academic research. Um, and I was wondering if you could elaborate or share your experience on what role academic research has in the development of your architecture and, in your opinion, what role it has in shaping the future of architecture. Uh. Uh, the uh, academics, as uh, I, I'm teaching in Tokyo University, and also the, uh, uh, I started a new program for Tokyo University. Uh, the, uh, the before the me, the Tadao Ando was teaching in Tokyo University, but his education system was very classic. <laughs> the, his, 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 his material is concrete, <laughs> just concrete. <laughs> And, uh, the, and also sh shape is very is a simple, geometrical, the, and it's, it's, oh, of course it's a beautiful architecture, but, but the, uh, the, the, I think it's too classic for a student. And then we open the new s as studio, new space, like, like, that, the, uh, like that kind of space with some machines, and uh, we call it a, 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 a digital fabrication lab, and, uh, and the we try to combine the, the, some the parametric design with the, uh, the, the research of the material, and also the, the, some craftsmanship artisan can participate in that project. And so we try to combine those things. And, the, and, uh, and we, as a, uh, we, we, we can get many hints from the, that research, and we can realize by the pavilion. And uh, to connect, the, as a, the, to, to connect those things is always the most the exciting. 
So if we uh, do the academic research in the university, it is not, it's very boring. But if we can combine outside of the university, inside of the university, uh, so it can be very, very, very exciting. Yeah. Any other question? Sí. Hello. Um, I'm very interested in um, people self-building, and uh, I noticed that because your designs are very modular, uh, your materials you're producing are very modular, have you thought about opening it up so that people could uh, take your, take for instance the sticks that interlock and produce their own designs? Uh, have you thought about how that could uh, go forwards? <laughs> what is the question? <laughs> Can you hear? Because because your your uh, your design methods are all based on a reproducible modular systems. Mm. Uh, it, it seems to me to lend to people building their own houses or self-building their own buildings uh, and coming up with their own design systems based on your modules. Have you have you thought about opening up the, uh, uh. your design to be used by other people or Developing it for other people. Yeah, the so, so, so our project pro probably is a, is a can provide many hint to the ordinary people, but uh, to realize the, the, those idea for the real project is not so easy. <laughs> but uh, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, for example, as a, a water block, water water brick and water block projects, the. Uh, so our student so, uh, use that water block system for their uh, own project. Their own project is uh, the renovation of the traditional Japanese house by uh, uh, by using those water block. It is a very interesting project. Today I don't have the pictures of that, but the traditional wooden houses and the partitions are water brick. And, uh, and uh, the also furniture by water brick. Uh, that, that kind of uh, the adaptation can be possible. Okay. Okay. No one else? So, um, if you don't have any other questions, nothing more to say than to thank uh, Mr. Kumasan for his lecture. It has been an honor for Yak to host you here among us, and that has been very generous from your side to share uh, your presentation with your project. So, thank you very much, Mr. Kumasan. Thank you. Thank you very much.